Well, greetings, beloved, and welcome to another episode of Elcom Online. I'm so glad that you've taken the time out to tune in and be with us on today. I tell you, it's very encouraging to be with you. Wish I would be able to get with you in person. One day that is going to happen. I believe it with all my heart. But in the meantime, I am grateful for this opportunity to come into your home and to share a word of faith and encouragement with you. And boy, I believe I got a word for you today. So I encourage you, like this video, please do me that favor, will you? Like this video and share it with somebody that you believe that will be encouraged by this word today. I encourage you to do that for me right away. Today we're going to be ministering the word of God. And um, this subject entitled Mantles, Ministries, and Mandates. Mantles, Ministries, and Mandates. We're going to talk about placing a demand on the anointing. Placing a demand on the anointing. You don't want to miss it. So I encourage you, get your Bible, turn to John chapter 2, starting at verse 1. That's where we're going to take our text from the day. Let's gather the family. Uh, we'll encourage you also to stay tuned to the end of this broadcast because I want to pray with you. I want to come in agreement with you again. We are believing God for the supernatural. We believe in God to, to, for, for God to do some crazy stuff in our lives during the time that we are in. I believe the Bible have declared that gross darkness will cover the earth and even gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall come upon us, the people of God, the blood-bought believers. This is your time to shine. Amen. Praise God. So I want you to tune your faith in in that direction. We'll be right back after this. God, I encourage you to get your word. Like I said, we're going to jump into the word of God today. I want to talk about mantles, ministries, and mandates. Mantles, ministries, and mandates. I want, to, I want to show you how to place a demand on the anointing. There's some stuff that I taught a while back to the, in a Bible study that I felt in my spirit would be good to bring back. And as I've been preparing for this, the Holy Spirit has put some downloaded some fresh stuff, fresh information into my spirit that I want to share. And right after we share this, we're going to go into a time of prayer. And I want to come in agreement with you, come in agreement with your family. Amen. I'm believing God for you to see the miraculous, to see some super on your natural. Amen. I know it's very easy for us to get into this mundane state, to get into this, you know, you know, oh, God only help those who help themselves state. But how many know that we are believers? We are believers and we are called to believe. We're called to live in faith. And the only purpose to live in faith is so that we can live at a dimension to live to bring heaven into earth. It's not just God's will to get you to heaven. Yes, we are going to heaven one day, but it is also his will for you to become a doorway. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. We are gates. In other words, we are access points in the earth to get heaven on earth. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're only teaching. And we're only going this direction so that we can get to a point of faith so that we can see God intervene in our life. I don't know about you, but I am ready to see God more and more into my life like number four. And I believe we are in the time, we are in the season for those things to begin to happen and manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, we're going to take our text from John chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. But before I get there, I want to establish some things into the teaching today. I want to establish some stuff out front before we get to that text because I'm telling you, I read something in this text today that kind of stirred my faith and I really hope it's going to stir your faith as well. Now, I grew up, you know, growing and I grew up as a, any probably average kid, you know, tuned into the Marvel movies and, you know, I wasn't born during the time when the Marvel comics was big. I'm, I'm, I'm during the time when the Marvel and the DC movies were, came, are, are coming out. And um, I am reminded of one of the Marvel uh, movies that recently came out um, called Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange, uh, I believe some things happened as I was preparing for this teaching. I was reminded of this movie 
and it has some great context um, to um, our message and the teaching that we're going to be talking about today. But Dr. Strange was a world-renowned physician. He was a doctor that got an accident, and when he got an accident, he hurt his hand, went through a great deal of um, um, searching to find a cure, to find to get the full mobility back to his hand. And in doing so, he got hooked up with some folks, got hooked up with a sorcerer, and the sorcerer connected him um, into a whole nother life that he ended up leaving this, this very astute, this very um, successful life as a physician, and he still, and he began to serve and this 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 particular lifestyle grabbed a hold of him but it grabbed a hold of him in the form of a cape and the cape was called the cape of levitation and this cape man I tell you it was almost like a person it, it, it was like I was sharing with the team the day who was getting ready to, to, to record that when we got up this morning we chose the clothes that we have you know I chose this shirt I chose to wear this shirt this morning but this, in, in Dr. Strange's situation, the cape, he didn't choose the cape, but the cape chose him. And this cape is very powerful. It reminded me of John chapter 15, verse 16, where it says, you do not choose me, Jesus is saying, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might be the bearer of fruit. I didn't, you didn't choose me, but I chose you, and I chose you for a purpose, and I chose you for a reason. I believe in the, the, what the cape was to Dr. Strange, the anointing is for us, praise God, hallelujah. And this cape has had some, it was had a very intel, it operated at a very intelligent level um, to the point that it protected him, it shielded him, it would pick him up. If he failed, it would grab him. I mean, it sounds so much like the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works for us and how the Holy Spirit moves for us. We've come to understand that the Holy Spirit is also the anointing. Now let me say something right here because I really believe in it. I grew up in Pentecostal settings, holiness settings, and I, and I heard all, about all types of varieties of anointings. And I, I don't think nothing in particular wrong with this, um, but, you know, when I grew up, I, I, I learned of there was a prosperity anointing and there was a healing anointing and there was uh, different types of anointings. And I don't really, I'm not coming on here to confront the way that we identified the anointing other than just to say that I only believe that there's only really one primary anointing and that the same anointing that Jesus operated in in the earth is that same anointing that lives in us as we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is no other way that we're going to carry out the Great Commission outside of us having this anointing, outside of us having this mantle, if you will, because we're going to be talking about that today. And so I believe that when the anointing comes upon a believer, that that anointing basically gives you the ability to flow and to operate. Every time you would hear the anointing or when the anointing would be activated on a person in scripture, directly after, immediately after the anointing comes in contact with that person, they begin to function. And so I do not believe that anybody that is anointed is lazy. I don't believe anybody that is anointed is sitting around not doing nothing or running from their assignment. When the anointing comes upon your life, it gives you um, the ability to begin to operate and to move into the things of God. Amen. Praise God. The scriptures tell us that Jesus was and is the anointed one. And he was anointed um, by the Holy Spirit. He was and is the anointed one and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in the earth today and he is our witness to Jesus. But Jesus, when he was in the earth, he was their witness to the Holy Spirit or to the anointing. All right. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38 declares this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, a man with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about. Watch this. He's anointed. And right after he, we, he's made known that he is anointed, look at what happens. He went. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Aren't that amazing? That is very amazing. Here's some points I want to make to you. Point number one, the ministry of Christ was governed by eternity. The ministry of Christ, the ministry that we see him operating in, in the Gospels, they, these, his ministry was not governed by the natural realm, the natural, the, the natural arena. It was governed by eternity. Are you hearing me? 
Point number two, Christ's ministry was designed to manifest the supernatural. The purpose of Christ's coming was to manifest the supernatural. Remember what I told you in days gone by, that the, that the world, that the world that was created, the earth was created to be an extension of heaven. Everything, the, the same rule and government of heaven was intended to rule and govern earth. But through sin, we were broken away from that. And through the blood of Jesus, through the remission of sins, he's been restoring us. He has restored us back to that place. To the believer, the person who is born again, this is why the Bible instructs us to renew our minds. Because your mentality determines your reality. You cannot have a reality outside of the mindset that you have. And so the word of God, the teaching, Bible studies, these things are put in place to transform our minds. Are you listening to me? It is through the person of Jesus Christ that I received eternal life. One day I'm going to be in heaven with him through the shedding of his blood. But it is through the principle of Jesus Christ that I bring heaven to earth. That is what we're here for. That is the time that we're in. And I'm believing that I'm, I'm going to raise up a people that has like-minded faith that we are believing God to bring heaven right here in the now, in the place that we're in. Amen. I believe that this is a time of demonstration. I believe this is a time of manifestation of the kingdom of God right here in West Palm Beach or wherever it is you're viewing this right now. And it is for you. I think the most important statement that I'm going to make tonight, I'm about to make it right now. And that is, Jesus did not come to show us what God can do. Mm but what man in right relationship can do with God. Are y'all hearing? Let me say that again. Jesus did not come to show us what God can do, but what man in the right relationship with God can do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You hear that it doesn't take much faith to believe what God can do. God is challenging many of us who's viewing this teaching right now that to, for you to believe that God can work through you and I know in the culture of the church, God, may he change it in us that we believe that I have to be a preacher. We believe that I need to have a title. No, 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 no. It is not just reserved for people that has a title or been a prophet or whatever. No, 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 no. Only thing that, you, that, that, requi that this type of lifestyle requires is that you are born again and that you develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Out of that relationship is going to flow the manifestation power of God. So Jesus, when I read this Bible and when I read his word, the purpose of me reading it is to find out what it is that God can do in my life when the Holy Spirit rests upon me. You do recognize that the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that was on Jesus, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that is the same spirit that rests and resides in us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I'm praying today that there be a stirring of his spirit upon your life and ministry. I'm praying that there be a stirring of, of, of the fire of God in your life and the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can begin to operate in the things of God that he called you to do. You don't need a, a, a teaching degree. You don't need an ordination service. Matter of fact, you already had one. Praise God, before the foundations of the world, you were ordained. Amen, for such a time as this. Praise God, hallelujah. But I want to talk about mantles. I want to deal with this thing on mantles right now so that you can understand where we're going and what we believe in God for. What is a mantle? Let's define that first. What is a mantle? A mantle is a symbolic type uh, for a calling or ministry or a ministry gift. Let me say it again. A mantle is a symbolic type for a calling or a ministry and ministry gift. It is an anointing or a respected office given to an individual by God. A mantle is an anointing or a respected office given to an individual by God. A mantle brings a mark of distinction, all right? Mantles bring a mark of distinction upon you as a ministry gift. A mantle qualifies you. It qualifies you to serve in your respected office or grace, all right? Mantles determine destiny. Mantle determined destiny. As I said before, when the anointing comes upon you, it immediately moves you to action. It immediately begins to give you something to do. And out of that, I always say when people come and say, what am I calling it? What it is and that? Well, when the anointing rests upon your life, all we need to do is stand back and begin to look at what you do. And we're going to begin to find out what it is that God placed inside of you. 
the anointing falls, when it comes upon your life, it is designed to come in and to stir up the gifts that are within you. Stir up the grace that is upon you. You were already, you were born loaded. You were born, when you came to this earth, you came here loaded with all kinds of potential, with all kinds of grace. And I'm believing God that the time that we're in, it is not to show us that God is not for us, but I believe it is for us to show up, to put pressure on those, on those areas, to put pressure on our, on our potential and bring it to the surface and to be, so we can begin to understand and see all that God has for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So mantles determine destiny before it actually begins and, and mantles releases the supernatural into the natural. When a mantle is given, it is given for the intent for the supernatural to be released into the natural. Are you still with me? Now watch this. The mantles reveal the identity of the son. Mantles bring identity. Mantles release, it, 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 it identifies a person's identity. So it is almost important for us to even know who we are without the mantle and without the grace of God, all right? I want to share with you a few things because the, 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 the Old Testament has some, has some um, patterns in it that I want to point out concerning this thing of mantles. Um, and, and, and what I've learned is in the Old Testament, the mantles, they carry different names, mantles, garments, coats. These are, these are all names that depict these uh, mantles that fall upon us. Now, our ultimate mantle that we're going to be talking about today is Jesus Christ mantle, the anointed one. Are y'all hearing me? The anointed one that he has a mantle. And I'm going to show you that every time uh, pressure was applied um, 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 or a demand was made on his mantle, miracles begin to flow. Things begin to happen. The earth began to be impacted because somebody put a demand on that anointing. But before we get to that, I want to talk about mantles in the Old Testament. Mantles in the Old Testament. The pattern of mantles in the Old Testament shows that mantles or garments were used to transfer the anointing from one generation to the next. So the first stories in the Old Testament that we learn of um, concerning these mantles, concerning um, these garments or coats, we, we, we see them in relations to fathers and sons. We see one of the first places that we see um, a, a mantle is made, even as, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go as far back to that, to the garden. That would, as soon as sin shows up and death is activated, God immediately begins to make room and begin to do things to bring them back to. And I'm, y'all gonna, it's going to make sense in a minute. Because when Adam fell, the Bible says that they had fig trees to hide themselves. They took fig leaves to hide up and to cover up their nakedness. But in the, in the, in when, they com, when, when, when the God confronted them, they began, um, and he, he removed them from the garden. The Bible says that, he, that, that God, he, by killing an animal, he took the hide of this animal and he used it to, as a covering uh, for Adam and Eve. And so in that place, I believe, I believe that is the first picture of a mantle that we see in the Old Testament. All right. And so um, the next time we see a mantle or we see a story concerning covenants, it's the story of Joseph. It's the story of Joseph in the coat of many colors. It is, it is a picture of favor. It is a picture of loyalty. It is a picture of distinction, a mark upon that child that there is a grace that sets him aside from the other sons. And so we see the relationship between fathers and sons and this mantle being there. And I believe that there's a reason why that this mantle was here. The order of father-son in the line of Aaron, this is in Exodus chapter 29, verses 4 through 9, um, it clearly demonstrates the need for spiritual garments and mantles. It, it, it immediately, the transferring of ministry, the transferring of a grace, all happened upon a garment, the passing of, of a garment from the father um, to the son. Aaron is appointed. Aaron is appointed. His sons are not. His, uh, let me say it this way. Aaron is anointed, but his sons are not anointed. They are given coats, they are given garments, they are given mantles. Um, Aaron alone had the anointing poured upon his head. The only anointing that the sons received was by the impartation 
of the anointing contained in the garments of their father. So the anointing reached their lives, not through the pouring out of, of oil um, as they would do in these days, but it was transferred through the passing down of these particular garments. So the only anointing that the sons received was the impartation of the anointing contained in these garments of their father. And so the garments, they are created to contain the anointing. The garments are created to contain the anointing and to cover the flesh of the ministry. So we see two functions that are taking place and they are to, they are to contain and to make to be the vehicle of transference of an anointing from one gener generation unto the next, praise God. And then they are, in, they are decided because as God raised us up, you're not perfect. And a lot of us right now viewing this broadcast are struggling with your ministry, struggling with your anointing, and struggling with your calling because you're looking at your humanity. Well, you, the reason why that's, big, that's a big struggle because we're, we don't really hear teachings like this in today's um, age in the church in our culture about how God has orchestrated this mantle to be passed down to number one to pass and the, for you to receive the anointing and but for number two to cover up your neck in other words to cover up your flaws no we're not perfect do we strive for perfection absolutely but he that is perfect lives on the inside of us and he covers our flaws. He covers our nakedness. He covers our shortcomings. Are you still here with me? I'm blessed to hear about the story. I'm reminded of the story in Genesis chapter 27 verses 1 through 23. And forgive me for moving fast because I don't want to waste all of your time. And I, because I want to get to the time of prayer and come in agreement with you. All right. And so in Genesis chapter 27, forgive me not for reading this, the entire story and just abbreviating this. The story of Isaac, he's old and he is about to die. And the time comes to bless um, his son. All right. And, and, and there was some occurrence. There's some things that already happened prior to this story that between these two sons, and, um, and these two sons, the oldest son, did not see any significance in the birthright. He didn't see any significance of him being the eldest. And so because of that, he did not um, place any emphasis or any, any, any value on him receiving the birthright. And so one day he's being so famished that he's about to pass out, he believes that he sells his birthright to his younger brother. And so now we've come to Genesis chapter 27, where he is, where, where Isaac, their father, is about to die. And he gives instructions to the eldest son to go out and prepare a meal, to go hunt and get him to, to prepare a meal and to bring it to him so that he might bless or to transfer the blessing that is upon him. Now, the part of the story I want you to see is what the mother of, of Jacob did uh, to put him in position to receive what has been rightly been given or turned over to him through the, through the agreement of his elder brother. In order for him to receive it, because Isaac is old and he cannot see, he takes the anointing, he takes, he takes um, some food prepared by his mother, he takes this food, and then he, 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 he takes, because Ishmael is a hairy man, and because he, 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 he was so hairy, he had hair everywhere, and so Jacob was smooth and he didn't hardly have hair, he had to put on a, some wool. He had to put on animal skin in order to imitate his brother, which, again, it shows the picture of this mantle. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit showed me today as we were preparing to, 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 to take this is that the anointing, that the mantle, that when we put on the mantle, it releases a blessing. It causes things to open for us that usually wouldn't have opened for us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It causes a release of God's blessing upon our lives. And so it was that as Jacob went into the room of, of his father, he went in, and um, not as him, but as his elder brother. When we look at prayer, prayer when we come in you hear us always pray in the name of Jesus what are we doing we're doing the same thing that Jacob did before his father God Isaac represents the father God we represent Jacob the younger brother and as he prays and as he, as we pray in Jesus name we are clothing ourselves my God I feel the anointing with the anointing <laughs> hallelujah 
we, we, we clothe ourselves in the identity of our elder brother. And so what usually would have been denied cannot be denied because the father now when he see us when we pray in Jesus name we are covering ourselves with the blood we're covering ourselves with the anointing we're covering ourselves with the identity of Jesus and so when the when we are covered God don't see your shortcomings he don't see your sins all he sees is Jesus all he sees is the is the mantle or the glory that that rests upon you that is from your elder brother the bible says in the new testament in hebrews that we are joint heirs we are joint heirs with christ that whatever christ receives glory to god what is an inheritance an inheritance is something you receive as a result of being something are you hearing me? In other words, identity releases inheritance. So when I come not as myself, not as my broken me, not as the person that I'm not that, that I was, not as the person that was created in the flesh, but when I take on the identity of Christ, praise God. When I take on who he is and I become who he is, when I take on his identity, praise God. I am putting on the mantle and as I come before Christ, as I come before the Father, everything, if it was yes and amen to Christ, guess what? It's going to be yes and amen for me. I will not be denied. I will not be hindered. Praise God. I'm believing God today in this program that as we pray, everything we ask for in Jesus' name will not be denied us. That we are going to receive full access to the Father. And the Father will find favor with us, not because of who we were, but because of who we are praise God. You are alive in Christ. You are raised up with Christ. You are seated in heavenly places with the anointing with Christ. Are you hearing me? We're not praying today from a low place. We're not praying from a physical place. We're praying from the, from the spirit. We're praying from our position of the joint heir with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Another story that I want to talk about before we get into this, Elijah followed, served, and pursued Elijah in order to receive a double portion of the anointing that was upon Elijah's life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When we look at the mantle, Elijah had a mantle. And this mantle carried five different distinctions. Or I begin to see as I studied this that Elijah's mantle contained an anointing. But this anointing had authority over five areas of life. In other words, I believe it's probably more than this, but the Bible records five areas, glory to God, five areas um, that, the, that, that this anointing had authority over. Remember, when God gives you an anointing, he has given you a place of reign. He has given you a region to operate that anointing. And nothing can happen in that region except you allow it. Nothing can take place. Nothing can happen in that realm of your dominion. How many know your house is your realm of dominion? Your job, your workplace is the realm of your dominion. Your family, everybody that's connected to your bloodline, everybody that's in your family, everybody that carry your name has now, glory to God, has that place. That is your realm of dominion. That, in other words, you can take authority. If anything is that's in any family member that is out of line, that is not connected, that is not lining up with the will of God, God has given you an anointing. He's giving you a grace to address it. He's giving you a grace to call those things that be not as though they were. Now listen to me. Elijah's mantle contained an anointing that had, that had authority over five areas of life. Let me show you what they are. Number one, he gave him authority over nature. He gave him authority over nature. This authority, we see that, he, that when Elijah was taken up, and Elijah, Elijah reached back and he threw his mantle back down to the earth. The Bible says that Elisha picked up the mantle and he slapped the Jordan. And the Bible says, and the rivers and the Jordan River parted and he was able to walk over on dry ground. When the mantle comes, when the mantle, this mantle had gave him the ability to control the elements. In, in a previous teaching, I told you that how principalities 
um, have take advantage of using anything. They'll use animals. They'll use the storm. The Bible says as, the, as Jesus was going over to the other side and he was in the bottom of the boat sleep, a storm arose. That spirit, that, demo, that territorial demon over the region by which they were headed, that, that spirit uh, started, took the wind. It used the waters to, to try and stop them from moving. Praise God. Well, I submit to you, I submit to you that God has given you an anointing to, to lay hold and to speak to the natural things, to speak to nature and cause it to line up with the will of God. You may call people crazy that speaks to those storms that, that develop out here in the Atlantic during this time of year. We're in the hurricane season, praise God. But I got some people in my life, they go out there and speak to those storms. Well, praise God, if Jesus was able to rebuke a storm, guess what? You got the ability. You got to remember, you are a joint heir. You are a joint heir. So whatever Jesus did, guess what? I am mandated by God to do. Man, I feel God in this room right now. Whatever that is ailing you, whatever that's not coming right, whatever that's not flowing right, whatever that's not doing what it's supposed to do, if they ain't lining up with the word of God, man, I tell you, you have an anointing to step out and to speak to it. You have an anointing right now to, relax, to, to, to release that anointing to begin to take authority over that particular situation. The second thing, we got to hurry. Of, of this, his, Elijah's mantle had authority in times of war. It had authority in times of war. In other words, it brought about supernatural aid supernatural abilities the chariots of fire praise God this is over here in 2nd Kings chapter 6 verses 8 through 23 and he prayed and told them open the eyes that they may see that they may see that there is more for us than there are against you know what I believe God is telling us right now that there is more for you right now than there are against you the problem is you're not seeing you're not seeing in the realm of the spirit the things that are for you that you got a whole host surrounding your house right now glory to God you got a whole host of angels armies surrounding your situation right now praise God and they're ready to move at your word they're ready to move a amen praise God at whatever you decree and whatever you say number three authority over cycles of plenty and scarcity authority over cycles of plenty and scarcity his anointing began to change situations he controlled and spoke to the spoke to the to the rain and told the sky it won't rain until I declare it until I speak it. And a famine hit the earth as a result of his decree. Rain did not, it did not rain until Elijah declared and spoke it. What am I trying to tell you right now? That I don't care what your situation is, I believe for most of us, it has not been the devil that caused it, it's been our words that caused it. You don't even realize how powerful you are. You don't realize how anointed you are. The devil got you believing that your anointing don't work when you done messed up. No, 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 no. No, no, your, your anointing flows. That anointing is still there. It's what, what has happened is we are more over in the flesh than we are in the spirit. And a lot of things have happened because we've spoken them. He's told us in his word that by your words, you're going to be justified. By your words, you're going to be acquitted. Either your words going to bless you or either your words going to curse you. Whatever your mouth say, your anointing will respond to it. Glory to God. Whatever you say out of your mouth, the anointing is going to move according to what you say. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I got to move on. Um, um, number four is authority. He had authority over disease. He had authority over disease. You gotta, you have power to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I don't care what done happened. I don't care what has taken place in the past. Praise God, he has given you. If you have an anointing, you have an anointing to heal. If you have an anointing, you have an anointing to bring deliverance. If you have an anointing, the anointing will do whatever it is it, that is need, need to be done at that particular time. And finally, number five, this, this anointing had authority over birth and death. This anointing had authority over birth and death. The Shudamite woman couldn't have a child. What did the prophet do? Give her a word, standing in the door. By this time next year, you're going to have a son. And lo and behold, the word of the Lord came to pass. And then some years passed. All of a sudden, the child was out in the, out in the field with his father working, and the child collapsed and died of a heat stroke. They, they didn't take the child to the hospital. They took the child to the bed of the prophet. And the Bible says that the prophet came and laid, ah, ramba sonda la basia, laid on the body of that child and called his breath back into his body. 
I'm telling you, the anointing is great. And I believe that we are in a time. I believe that we are in a season, praise God, that we're getting ready to see even more the, the demonstration of the power of God. Whenever you see darkness increase, guess what? His glory is about to increase in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So everything that we see displayed in the life and ministry of both Elijah and Elisha is found in the ministry of Jesus. Jesus extends, extends many of Elijah's miracles demonstrating his control over all aspects of life. We see five areas in Elijah's anointing, but when, when, when Jesus comes on the scene, he has authority in every last one of them. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Jesus extends, he goes beyond. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Elijah fed a hundred men with 20 barley, well, or 20 barley loaves. Jesus fed 40 to 50 times more with even less, with only two fish and five loaves of bread. Elijah raises the Shunammite woman's son, but Jesus raises several children. He raises Lazarus, and he, ra and he finally raises himself. Praise God. Hallelujah. As you study the, the ministry of Jesus, Lord, him and funerals didn't get along. Wherever he went, every time he went to a funeral, he interrupted it. Amen. Praise God. And it, what, made, what gave him that ability? The anointing gave him that ability. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, so Jesus' anointing, watch this, it carried three different, six different functions according to Luke chapter 4 verse 16. And let me give you those three different, let me give you those six different functions. Number one, to preach the gospel to the poor. Number two, to heal the brokenhearted. Number three, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Number four, recovery of sight to the blind. Number five, the setting at liberty those who are oppressed. And number six, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. My God, when, when the anointing of Jesus Christ steps in the room, any of these issues, any of these categories, I should say, if they are present, the anointing will address it. The anointing will, oh my God, hallelujah. If I were you, I would be hollering and I would be calling the anointing in the name, in my situation, in my house. I receive the mantle. I put a demand on the mantle of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. So in our story, in our text, John chapter 2, we finally come to it. In John chapter 2, a demand was placed, we see, in this story on Jesus' mantle. And as a result, miracles begin to flow. Miracles begin to flow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now it says here that on the third day, there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee. This is the first miracle. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they had ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Who did, he, who did she go to? She went to the one that had the ability to do something about the problem. Glory to God. Verse 4 says, Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your, what does your concern have to do with, with me? Why are you bothering me? My hour has not yet come. So in other words, Jesus is saying, there has been a set time for me to operate in the realm that you're trying to pull me into right now. And that time has not come. But Mary did not stop. Look at here, boy. This reminds me of my mama. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now there were set there six water pots of stone. Let me go back to verse 5. His mother said to the servant, ignoring what he said, he said to the servant, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, you need to do it. Notice what happened. That's a powerful statement. Faith ain't studying time. I know that was country just then. Faith is not studying. It ain't concerned with what time. Because when I operate in faith, watch this, it lifts me above the earthly laws. Praise God. Look at verse 6. He says here, now there's, there were set three, there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallon pe a, a piece. Jesus said to them, fill the water, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. 
When the master of the feast had tasted the wine, the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, uh, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and he said to him, every man at the beginning um, sets out the good wine and when the guests have well drunk, then the, the, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine unto now. Look at what he says in verse 11. Then Jesus, did this, this begin, beginning of signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. His disciples believed in him. Man, I'm telling you, look at what his mother, I want you to, I want you to see something here. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was so, uh, was so strong, her faith was so strong that it actually brought miracles, caused miracles to occur that was reserved for a future time um, into the present. Her faith made what's supposed to happen in future time to actually take place right now. My God, hallelujah. What am I trying to tell you? You have the ability. You have the ability to put a demand on your faith. Don't be looking for this. Don't be looking for that. Don't be looking for things in the natural. I don't care if, you're, if the natural have, have, have been depleted. It's all right. Praise God because you have a solution that can come out of the spirit. And I believe God is, is, is instructing me to encourage every believer, to encourage you, to encourage your family to begin to put a demand upon his anointing put a demand upon the grace. How y'all are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He want us to put a demand on the things that 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 has been made available to you. You have a reservoir that I showed you before. You have been given reservoirs in the spirit. Come on, let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe your word today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your revelatory word. We thank you for giving us, God, your word and giving us the ability on how to use your word. For you have given us your word, not just as a book to read, but you've given us your word, God, uh, as a source, as a tool, God, to pull what is in the spirit realm into the natural in the name of Jesus. Now, I connect with my brother. I connect with my sister. I connect with those who are viewing, God, this program in in the name of Jesus we are believing you today by faith for the impossible we are believing you today by faith God to move on your people's behalf in the name of Jesus we call forth out of the realm of the spirit into the natural everything with our name on it in the name of Jesus come on come on begin to pray begin to stir your faith right now Father, we take charge over this atmosphere. We take charge over our realm of existence, over our realm, over the region by which you have appointed us and given us authority over. In the name of Jesus, we arrest every trafficking spirit. We arrest every demonic principality that has been sent against us, that has been sent to stop up our wells, to begin to stop up our flow. We break your hold right now and we pull you from your high place. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is against you. I say the blood of Jesus is against you. I, I speak into the atmosphere of this house by which this video is being heard. In the name of Jesus, that I command it to line up with the word of the Lord that has been released. I command it to line up with the anointing. I command the mantle of Jesus. Father, we pray that we get your attention today. We pray right now, God, that you would find favor on this house, that you would find favor with this people. In the name of Jesus, cause the anointing to begin to work for them. Cause the anointing to begin to fight for them in every situation, in the arena of finance, in the arena of their relationships, in their health and in their body. I curse sickness right now. In the name of Jesus, I put a demand. I put a demand just like the persistent widow did with the judge. We will not stop. We will not give up. We will not falter until we get our answer. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will be heard. The favor of God will be our portion. In 
the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to declare the word of the Lord. Come on, begin to declare. Come on, put a demand on the anointing right now. Put a demand on the anointing right now. Anointing work for us. Anointing work for us. Anointing work for us. Work for my family right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for delayed moves. We pray for delayed answers. Lord, let your anointing begin to release that what has been delayed, that what has been denied in the name of Jesus, that what has been held up in the heavenly places. Cause the anointing to begin to loose, loose in the name of Jesus. Cause the heavens to begin to drop down our next level. Cause the heavens to begin to drop down those things that have been held up by demonic forces and principalities in the name of Jesus. Angels of the Lord, fight for us. Fight for us against every principality, against every spiritual darkness in heavenly places. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we give you earthly access for heavenly interference right now. In the name of Jesus, for every man, woman, boy, and girl, cover us, oh God. Cover us in these dangerous times. Cover us in these fearful times. In the name of Jesus, cause the mantle to shield us. Cause your mantle to cover us. Cause your mantle to protect us. In these times, in the name of Jesus. Come on, put a demand on the anointing. Come on, put a demand on the anointing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every son. I pray for every spiritual son. I pray for every spiritual daughter that has been disconnected, that's been disconnected from their mantle, from their spiritual lineage, that God, you have ordained for them to be. Cause your divine, cause the mantle to begin to work. Cause your mantle to begin to restore those connections in the name of Jesus. Every person that is exposed, every person that is not covered, cover them now in Jesus' name. Protect them now in Jesus' name. Come on, church, open your mouth and begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Cry out unto God. We put a demand on the anointing. 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 In the name of Jesus, a mantle work for us. Mantle of Jesus Christ work for us. Mantle of the anointing one work for me. Work for me in this hour. In the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to tell it. Mantle of God, work in our behalf. I, in every aspect of life. In every area of life. In the name of Jesus, work, work, work. Work, begin to work in our favor. Begin to work in our sons and daughters' favor. Begin to work in my spouse's favor. In the name of Jesus. Come on, begin to pray in this house. Come on, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. God, as we pray right now, let your anointing begin to flow. As we pray right now, let your anointing begin to move. As we pray right now, let your anointing begin to manifest. Come on, out of the spirit, into the natural. Out of the spirit into the natural. Out of the spirit into the natural. In the name of Jesus. Let cause miracles to manifest. Cause miracles to manifest in this home right now. In that car right now. Cause miracles to manifest. Miracles upon miracles upon miracles. In the name of Jesus. We pull it out of the spirit into the natural. We call it out of the spirit into the natural. We call it out of the spirit into the natural. We call it out of the spirit. That's it. Le baso ronda lama sondo re bakanda re ronda raba sonda raba saya re katala basonda raba rende le basaya miracles of healing be healed in Jesus name be healed by the anointing as the just like the woman with the issue of blood as she reached out and touched the hem of the garment that she was made whole by faith today we reach out tonight we reach out this morning with faith in Jesus name and we touch the hem of your garment in the name of Jesus for healing we touch the hem of your garment for restoration we touch the hem of your garment heal right now heal your people heal your people high blood pressure we curse you right now in the name of Jesus blood diseases we curse you right now in the name of Jesus unnatural bleeding and hemorrhaging we curse you right now headaches migraine headaches sinus headaches in the name of Jesus we curse you we curse you right now in the name of Jesus heart disease we curse you right now in the name of Jesus heart palpitation irregular heartbeats the blood of Jesus is against you you spirit of infirmity well we put you out right now we take authority over you with the mantle of heaven with the mantle of heaven in the name of Jesus sugar diabetes you are 
curse in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. 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 Labaso, Rikanda Labasa. We come against all aches and pains, generational, in the name of Jesus. Back issues, be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, reach out and touch him. Come on, reach out and touch him. Come on, reach out and touch him. I come against cataracts right now. The blood of Jesus is against you in the name of Jesus. I come against right now blood pressure, blood flow in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, you are cursed right now in the name of Jesus. Arthritis in the foot, arthritis in the hands, arthritis in the neck. We can come against you right now. Loose God's people and let them go. Loose God's people and let them go in the name of Jesus. Let go mental illnesses and sicknesses. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus. Loose God's people. Loose their minds. Loose their minds. La show. Come on, reach out and touch. Come on, reach out and touch him in Jesus' name. Let Katalaba Sondo Reba Babaha. Let Talaba Sondo Reba Babasia. We curse false images. We curse false identities. The blood of Jesus is against you. We, the blood, we renounce false identities. We, re, we, re, we renounce false identities right now. And we receive the identity of Christ. We receive his identity. That we are joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. That we are joint heirs with Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on church and pray. Uh, let this atmosphere be charged with the mantle of the anointing in the name of Jesus, with the mantle of the anointed one. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Moko Rebo Shanda Rama Sendelena Ramaha. Oh, Rama Mama Sondo Rebo Saya. I declare that there be a freeing, a loosing right now of prison doors, every person bound. By, 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 by any diseases, every person that's bound by any addictions in the name of Jesus, chemical dependencies, we loose, we loose you now by the anointing. We loose you now by the anointing in the name of Jesus. We curse the taste, we curse the appetite in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Labasonda Father, we call your people blessed. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the anointing set your people free. May the anointing from this day forward begin to work behalf of your people. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're giving us a boldness, God, to stand up in who we are and who you called us to be in this hour. Stir your people. Stir us. Not only to be blessed, not only to be set free and healed by the anointing, but God, be used by the anointing. Let the mantle rest upon us. Let it rest upon our ministries. Let that mantle rest the same grace that you flowed in. We receive that right now. We receive that right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for the harvest of souls that you're gathering right now. I thank you for the army of evangelists that you're raising up right now, carrying this mantle into the earth. We thank you. We thank you for peace. Somebody's listening to me, they haven't been able to rest, haven't been able to sleep without any chemical aid. Give your people rest. Let the anointing set them free. Let the anointing set them free. Let the anointing set them free in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. that you've been blessed by this episode of El Como Line. We thank you for your time and taking out the time to allow us to come in agreement with you.
pray that this word has transformed your life in some kind of way. Want to hear about it? Reach out to us if you can. Um, as always, it's a Sunday morning. I want to give you that opportunity to sow the honor, to work that beautiful kingdom principle. 10% belong to him. Every he, we, 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 We've covenanted with God to give a dime out of every dollar. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's asked for That's all he asked for, for a dime out of every dollar. You can do that by going to Elcom West Palm. Um, com, click that donate button, amen, and you're able to give and do and make those financial contributions. Thank you to every person that supports us um, and, and, and enables us to do and keep moving and doing the work of God. That is how we are able to function because of our faithful partners and friends that pray for us and that support us with their financial contributions. We thank you and God bless you. Until next week, remain in faith. Be like that persistent widow. Give me justice give up. Let this episode be a be your fuel, be the time of encouragement. You can always go back and review previous times. I know I gave a lot of information out today. Um, right, directly after this, you can go back and get those notes and get the information. As a matter of fact, if you would like the notes that we were that I was teaching from today, you can reach out to us, email me, let me know, and we can get those, get that information to you. We thank God for you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>